Some of us like to shop. Oh, you think you're going to get away today, huh? You go, yeah, addiction, yeah, lust. Shop. Somebody knows shopping can be a sin. Oh, don't let me be depressed. I, I'll put, are y'all with me? Just want to go shop up a storm. Huh? You say you don't have no money, but boy, when it comes to on yourself, you, can, I, you find it. And you don't stop. You don't, you don't do it in moderation. Are you with me? All these deficits, all these problems point to a greater deficit with God. Gossip. You just can't stop talking about folk. Addiction. Destroying, tearing people down with your, with, your, with, with your mouth. You ain't praying. The same energy that you're using to talk about somebody, you can be using to pray for them. And praying for their breakthrough and their deliverance. Amen? Do you understand that sinners don't want to come to church because they say all we are are backbiting and gossiping people. I believe that God's raised up some churches that got to have a Holy Spirit conviction where people don't want to be tra- trash cans. Are you with me? Somebody comes to me with stuff I've learned to say, have you talked to that person? If you haven't talked to that person, please stop talking to me. Are y'all with me? And if they proceed to talk to me about that person, I'm going to say, come on over here. Come on, come on over here. If, 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 come on up here. I'm going to use my wife because she's safe. If Pastor Tekla is going to come to me and talk to me about Pastor she- I mean, like Brother Shelley, I'm going to say, Brother Shelley, come here. Come here. You know what? She got something to share with you. Because you know what happens? If when I we're gossip, I hear the gossip, I start looking at Brother Shelley crazy. Yeah, I know something on you. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. I ain't getting so close. Are y'all with me? But when we expose the devil, then we can pray together, amen, and be the people that God's called us to be. Thank you. Give them a hand clap. Thank you so much. Amen. How many worry and fear are, 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 how many, it's not faith? Huh? You just worry, worry, worry. Most of time, worry and eating and all those things are, com- are, y- are y'all with me? You start worrying. Some folks just love to worry. They talk about the same problem over and over and over and over again like it's going to change the problem. And then you start working yourself up. How many worry? Worry is to the devil is what praise is to God. Worry will bring a spirit of heaviness and depression over you. And before you know it, you've worked yourself up and you're so heavy that you don't even feel like doing anything. A spirit of discouragement will come on you. Fear. We say fear is what? False evidence what? Fear is not real. False evidence appearing real. You, oh, what if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if they get... They say 95% of what we worry about never happens. That's a scientific statistic. So why don't you just trust God? We say, how do you, how do you, what do you need to replace worry with? Faith. What's faith? Forsaking all, I trust him. Forsaking F all A I, I trust him. You got to remind yourself, I'm trusting you, God. I'm trusting you. Control. Some of us like to control everything. Oh, we're going berserk and we can't control it. Oh, it's, I need this right here. You moved my stuff. Who's been in my room? Who's been in my office? Who been? I need everything. I need this right here. Don't move the control. You didn't do it the way I wanted you to do it. You know anybody like that? You freaking out. Some of us are rushing home to see what our spouse is doing because they didn't do it the way we wanted them to do it. Control. Everybody say control. control. How many of you got to turn control over to God? Can I give you a news flash? Are you ready for this? this is real deep. Good to see you. It's real deep. Are you ready for it? Everything. Everybody say everything. everything. Doesn't have to be done your way. That was the most freeing thing I found out when I got married. Because I thought my way was always the right way. And everybody else's way was what? The wrong way. And I realized that if I'm getting the same results, guess what? That's the right way too. Are you with me? 
and I'm not compromising my faith. Amen? Now, I'm not talking about, oh, yeah, that means I can go to the strip club and, and get on the pole because I'm going to raise the money. To... No. That's the wrong way. Well, pastor said every way. That's the wrong way. But if you're staying in the Word, and if I fold the envelope like this and you want to fold it like that, as long as it's getting folded, are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Say, neighbor, Amen. stop trying to control everything. Amen. See, we are, our, our lives are so out of control that we just we over micromanage. We even in our churches, we don't let people grow to their potential because we always tell them what they can't do. My job is not to tell you what you can't do. My job is to tell you what you can do in Christ. Rules without, rules without relationship breeds rebellion. And you have people that have a dual life because they feel like they're all bound by all these rules and they're not ever coming into true relationship with the living God. See, the problem with the church sometimes is we, we try to clean the fish before the fish get, before we hook the fish. How would I look going down to the, to the Lake Alatoona with a knife, and all the gear to clean the fish, and I don't even got a fishing hook. I look crazy, right? And I see the, the, the stuff swimming, I start trying to, but that's what the church does. We get folk, folk come to our church, we trying to get them right. Mm, that dress too high. Mm, them pants, mm, they too tight. Mm, why you got all them chest hairs? <laughs> it's a holy church. Well, last time I checked, the Bible says go to the highways and the byways. Are you with me? And that lets me know that, amen, that lets me know that church is going to be a little bit messy. Are you with me? If sick folk are coming, how many, are you with me? Have you ever been to an emergency room in the hospital like north side of Kennestown? How many know it's messy? You're sick, you don't even want to touch nothing else in there. I, are y'all with me? The church is an emergency room. It's an emergency room. And there's people that are hurting, like me and you, that are struggling with these things. Greed, anger, materialism. I mean, no, we are a very materialistic society. See it in our youth. I come to school. What, what type of car are you driving? I said, what does that got to do with me teaching? How about you tell me what, what the assignment is today? That determines whether you listen to me or not? The car I'm driving is paid for. How about that? Amen. Amen. Materialistic. Folk won't even let you eat in their car. Don't breathe in my car. You ever been to people like that, you know? See, I was like that before I had kids. You know, I, I, I give the example of how my dad helped me so much to get over materialism. I remember when he got his brand new New Yorker, and there was a man that, in the community that would be at the bus stop. And he's about four miles from his house, and back then we walked. I remember we used to walk. I mean, I remember reminding, riding the bicycle in the summertime. <laughs> Amen? So I remember, see, it was a few people in the neighborhood that had Ataris and televisions. Everybody didn't have them. So you had to ride to that house that had them. I told you about my dad. I wanted Atari. My dad looked at that thing, looking at television, took me shopping with it. Then he went and bought me a computer and said, write your own programs. <laughs> Make your own Atari. That's how I became a programmer. Are you with me? Because he didn't see the value of that. But, but, but you got to, remember we used to have to ride our bikes and go places like that? You got to. Let some of this stuff go. But there was this man in our neighborhood. My dad would pick him up. And many times he had urinated on himself. And sometimes he even had feces on him because he was an older man. And I was like, Dad, we're going to get him in our new car. <laughs> the New Yorker with the plush seats. Man, he said, don't ever forget where you came from. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> hey, man, my sisters were attested. One of them here today, they get them be like, man, why you that? Like, get in the back seat now. Some of you get, do something crazy, you got them, right? I taught you that. And the man would be so thankful that we would take him. 
And I'd be like, man, I got to clean the car now. So don't ever forget, you can clean a car, but you can touch a life. How many know when you're trying to touch lives, it gets a little dirty sometimes? How many know you got to get out your comfort zone? You just can't get everybody that's already fixed and pretty, praise God. You got to, the Bible says go reach the lost. See, many of you in here, you came in here, you didn't go to church. But we loved up on you. Amen? One family at a time. Amen? And God's changed your life. What I'm, what I'm saying now is the same way we loved up on you, you got to love up on somebody else now. Amen? You got to love up on somebody else. Break the yokes of bondage. Getting out of self-absorption. Amen? You know, job loss, whatever your giant is, the first thing you got to do is you got to face your giant. Are you getting something out of this? I can't hear you. You getting something out of this? Okay, my time's going far. First thing you got to do, you got to recognize and you got to face your giant. You got to understand that you don't have just a problem. Everybody say, I got a problem now. That's what, that's what everybody 